Okay, so let us think about how they study concerning the Islamic world. Uh, we all know that uh, among the uh, major hot items now in the world, and I think especially this week, uh, from my short contact with the British uh, press looking at some of the programs and uh, so forth, uh, is the European Union. Uh, we all know that the Master Treaty was signed, and the European Union has its significant consequences to how the world will be in the 21st century. Uh, what will ha we know, of course, that only Allah knows the unseen. This is without doubt. But we can, at the same time, uh, know that, for instance, when countries unify and have a single currency, have a single political entity, have a single army, they are much stronger, right, when they are uh, single countries that are prone to having internal differences uh, and prone to uh, having some strong economies and weak economies. Uh, we also know historically uh, that the Europe, the West, has united before in history. Uh, they united during the times of the Crusades, when they were led by either the German king or the uh, French king or perhaps even the English king against the Muslims. So this is something which has occurred historically. And also we know that there are needs why Europe needs to unite now. That there are certain internal reasons which necessitate it to unite. Uh, one of it is self-preservation. Uh, when the Europeans are not united, they slaughter each other, as occurred in World War II and World War I. Basically, these were European trial, tribal wars, which they give the title of World War, but it's just basically a uh, European tribal war where one European population decimates another population. Uh, if such carnage and killing occurred after World War II with the technology of that state, what would happen now with the technology of this state? They might destroy all life on the continent. So therefore, unity is a necessity uh, for the Europeans. Uh, and therefore, we must understand that this also has implications upon the Islamic world. Uh, one of the implications was that a united Europe uh, that faces an... Um, oh, before we get into the implications, uh, then they... So many studies occurred um, from the West, and especially in Europe. What would the world be when Europe unites uh, in the 21st uh, century or the end of this century? What will occur in the world? Uh, there are different theories. We can mention four in general. Uh, one says that America will still be the leading power of the world. And this is what the uh, evangelicals want. Because the evangelicals see that America is the country which will bring the coming and prepare the way for the coming of Jesus, the son of Mary. And they see in the uh, New Testament that America has a role uh, in fighting the Muslims and uh, uh, bringing an end to what they refer to as the Canaanites or the idolaters, and that it will be the American armies which will uh, bring in the uh, coming of Jesus Christ. This is their belief. Um, uh, likewise, you find some uh, interpretations say that no, that in the next century it will be the Pacific Rim, uh, the Chinese, the Japanese, these Oriental nations, which will be the dominant power in the world. And the focus will shift from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And so therefore, uh, the, uh, the importance will not be cities like London and Paris and Berlin, uh, which, are, uh, which face the Atlantic, but, and also Washington, D.C. and New York, for instance, but the focus will be upon cities like Tokyo, Beijing, uh, and so forth, Seoul, Korea, and also co cities on the west uh, of the American continent, like Vancouver, Los Angeles, Seattle, and so forth. This is another interpretation. A third interpretation says, no, that the Europeans, with their unity, will occupy the preeminent position in the next century. And there's a fourth opinion that's saying that the Muslims will occupy that. Uh, these are said by some Westerners. Uh, some of them uh, openly, blatantly say that, and some of them uh, are quiet about it and say that in private. Uh, so, therefore, when they have these different interpretations, when they have these different uh, possibilities, they do not just sit upon them, but they actually act. And so, therefore, they take measures, political, economic, uh, social measures, to ensure that their interests will be preserved in any, in any uh, uh, contingency. So, with the contingency of maybe the Muslims being a powerful thing, they took certain measures. Among these measures was the Europeans made certain that there would be no Muslim country existing on the European continent. And so therefore the events of Bosnia that we all witnessed uh, during the last three, four years was a reflection of those decisions made. Because uh, if the Muslims are, if we were to argue that perhaps the Muslims, one contingency, that they would be the upcoming power in the next century, whether it happens in 50 years, 100 years, or 150 years, then to have an Islamic entity, no matter how small, within the European continent, would pose a danger to the Europeans. And so therefore they had to make sure that this state and these people were to not exist, to be wiped off the face of the earth. And so even though we are in the 20th century, and even though they have filled our ears with these false slogans like, uh, you know, that every people have the right to their own self-determination, uh, that this is a century of human rights, that the United Nations Charter, that, um, uh, for instance, uh, that uh, this country, international legitimacy, was recognized by the United Nations, but yet when it came to the test, no one was to be seen. 
and they allowed uh, the slaughter of a whole population, a population which in its essence is ethnically tied to them, because they're basically European people. They're basically light-skinned and blonde and so forth. They're not uh, like many of us here of a darker complexion uh, uh, coming from Asia or Africa. And so therefore, with all these slogans and with all these ideas, they allowed it, and they only stopped the war, right, uh, when uh, it became uh, a point where uh, it might result in an extremely negative reaction in the Islamic world, and so therefore they had to put it to an end. Uh, because to allow it to go further uh, would, in terms of the slaughter and the ethnic cleansing, would not fulfill their aims. And so therefore now they choose different aims, to strangle Bosnia, to strangle uh, the Muslims uh, there, to make sure that there is no Islamic presence on the continent of Europe. Another example uh, of this, uh, how do they plan uh, for the contingency of the Muslims being the uprising power in the next century or century and a half, uh, is what we see, for instance, now in the rise of extremist groups in Europe and in the United States. Uh, those groups which are referred to uh, sometimes as the neo-Nazi movement or uh, those groups which are referred to as the skinheads. And I'm sure in a city like London you're probably uh, well aware of that. I don't have to get into much detail. But, you know, it's, no, it's really interesting that many of these, even though they say that their major beef is with the colors, right, and with people of dark complexion, whether they are brown or yellow or black, uh, but however it seems from many of their statements that their real contention is with Muslims. And that's why they say they do not want to see any uh, people wearing uh, Islamic garbs in their cities or they don't want to see any mosques and so forth. And based upon these ideas is the emphasis for most of their uh, arguments. Um, now, uh, one does not have to uh, think far at how could such movements, whether they uh, arise upon their own without any uh, uh, being a cause for somebody creating these groups, right? How they can be manipulated by certain political forces uh, in Europe to make the Muslims leave Europe. Uh, in the sense that, uh, for instance, if Muslims are fearful that they are attacked, that they are uh, to be killed, uh, that, that they will, their messages will be burned, then what will be the natural reaction of the Muslims? The Muslims will go underground. Uh, they will try not to appear Islamic. Uh, women will start taking off their hijab. Uh, men will start to stop wearing Islamic garb. Uh, mosques might not be prominent. might be in just houses and so forth. And even many Muslims will not even think of coming. So therefore, they've achieved their aim in, in terms of uh, lessening the growth of Islam uh, on their continent. Um, another example, uh, for instance, besides the European Union team, which we can discuss, uh, is the issue of the population, uh, the demographic changes. Many of us have heard uh, the issue of the population uh, conference that occurred in Cairo some two years ago, uh, where the major thrust was to uh, stop the growth of Islamic population. We all know that in the beginning of the century, uh, European populations were the majority population. Uh, countries like Great Britain had greater populations than Egypt. However, we know that now that the Islamic world, over 60% of the Islamic world, or 65% of the numbers uh, uh, escape me now, are less than the age of 15. Uh, when, when 65% or 60% or even 50% of your population is less than 15 years old, and you are now 1 billion people, uh, what does that mean within a generation or two? The growth is astronomical. It doesn't take much for us to figure out how much that's going to occur. And likewise with them, uh, they, Europeans basically, uh, most of them, uh, their population is very old. I mean, in America now we have one of the big problems with Social Security, that they say that Social Security will go bust uh, in the year 2007. Why? Uh, because the amount of money in there and the amount of money, feeding money in there, is not, uh, is not enough uh, for the age of those people, the baby boomers who are going, people who are born in the 50s and the early 60s, who will be entering the age of retirement. Uh, because when the population is generally old, so therefore they're not entering into Social Security. Social Security is what we have. You pay from your check every week uh, for your retirement, you know, so you have some small portion. So if most of the population is taking from that, and there are not enough people to put into that, then that means the thing will collapse. And that's what they say about the year 2007, it will go broke. Uh, this has its implications. Uh, so therefore, uh, I can sit down. Uh, so therefore they realize that after a generation or two, uh, they will be such a minority and the, uh, the people of uh, uh, the Islamic will be such a majority, they won't even necessitate any warfare to occur just by mere sheer numbers, they will no longer have a preeminent position in the world. And so therefore they have to make sure that the Islamic world, this generation which we now witness, those people who are 15 and under, do not reach maturity. Whether through war, whether through environmental poisoning, whatever it means, they must make sure, or civil strife, whatever in their countries, that they do not reach the age of adulthood. And if they reach the age of adulthood, a person who has been engaged in civil war since the age of eight, you can't expect them to be a productive uh, individual for society. Uh, one cannot uh, imagine that the, uh, that the youth of Somalia who have engaged in, in the civil war now will be a productive society. I mean, it's going to have to wait for this generation to pass and to raise a new generation 
uh, in order for you to have productive. Uh, the generation of Iraq, the youngs of Iraq, uh, who are uh, dying now of starvation and, and also uh, from the effects of the radiation of depletion uh, uh, weapons and all the chemical environment after they go to war. What cannot expect that this generation now is going to be able to stand and do anything? Uh, maybe the generation after that or maybe the generation after that. And the same thing in Lebanon and so forth. So therefore one of their aims is to make sure that the Muslim population uh, is strangled and cut off the youth. The youth do not exist for the next generation. Likewise, part of that is an important looking country uh, to uh, have children. Uh, you know, Egypt, they passed out condoms by themselves in the United States government. Uh, in order to control a certain group, in order to control a certain group. And for this reason, uh, the last 10 or 15 years, uh, the average is in balance, which is about 2% of children, has dropped within 10 or 15 years period to 2.4. That's scary to try to do in Pakistan or in, um, in Pakistan or in uh, Bangladesh and other areas of heavy Muslim population, Indonesia and so forth. Uh, the reasons why I don't think escapes you. Uh, and likewise, uh, from the studies that the, the Europeans do regarding this, is concerning environmental pollution. All right? uh, environmental pollution, uh, we know that before uh, the uh, Cairo uh, conference on, uh, uh, on population development, there was the conference on, uh, on the environment, which was held in Brazil. All right? In that, they discussed about, the, they study how to preserve their environment. Because now it's realized that with the spread of technology, with the spread of industry, the environment is being poisoned. And when the environment is poisoned, human beings cannot live. And if human beings cannot live, then therefore it is essential that your environment is preserved and the environment of your, en your enemy is destroyed and depleted. And so that's why you find now they have shown where certain Western countries will take their nuclear waste and have been dumping it off the coast of certain West African countries. And all of a sudden now you find these West African Muslim countries, uh, the fishermen find all the fish dead in the sea. Uh, and they don't know why. The reason why is because nuclear waste has been dumped on the coast of the Islamic world. Uh, likewise, we find uh, certain companies uh, going to certain Muslim countries and uh, saying we would like to rent uh, your desert uh, for 20 or 30 years. Now people say, okay, that's very good. Take the desert. What are we going to do with a bunch of land, desert land? And what they do is they, 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 they bury in there nuclear waste, chemical waste, and so forth. Yeah, you don't feel the effects now, but within one generation or half generation, when those types of nuclear waste seep into the uh, water, uh, water, underground water uh, uh, hot table, uh, then therefore the population is affected. And so therefore uh, environmental warfare, uh, and at the same time cleaning their environment, uh, probably Muslim cities are the most filthy cities in the world. Because Muslims have no idea about the environment, have no idea about hygiene. Uh, and this is something which is, you know, you can see. I and mean, even in cities where, uh, cities where there is a Muslim minority, like when I was in Beijing this summer, uh, the Muslim streets of the Muslim quarter was the most filthiest quarter of all of Beijing. Beijing was a filthy city. It's a backward city, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, the Muslim quarter, I mean, was, you know, I mean unbearable. Uh, because the Muslims are the most ignorant people in this. Even though it's part of our religion, the Prophet said, uh, be not like the Jews. For the Jews do not clean off their, do their doorsteps. Uh, this is something from the Prophet Sunnah. But yet, uh, this is uh, something which is lost to the Muslims, and that's why we find Muslim cities like Cairo, uh, like uh, uh, major m m Muslim uh, metropolises like Cairo, uh, what else, Lahore, Karachi, uh, Dhaka, are probably the most, you know, dirtiest cities in the world, as opposed to uh, European American cities, which they are always trying to keep them clean and environmentally uh, safe. Okay, where are we now? Uh, uh, for instance, we also... Uh, have uh, among the um, uh, matters which they study is the issue of uh, transmission of uh, television and the, through the internet and through radio and so forth. What how does it affect? You know what? Before Europe opened itself up for satellite broadcast, they studied for a number of years what would be the effect of the spread of American culture upon the Europeans. And even though the Europeans and the Americans share the same heritage of being the West, uh, the same heritage of pagan Rome and Greece, and the same heritage of the corrupt, uh, corrupt religions of Christianity and Judaism, yet there are differences. And each uh, uh, side of the Atlantic uh, has its own self-pride. And they, Europeans studied what is the effect of the, the uh, spread of uh, American television, American satellite broadcasting, direct broadcasting, into Europe. And I, even recently, I remember last summer, maybe the summer before that, I read about a, a conference that was held in Europe concerning about the Internet. How will the Internet affect Europe? Because if America has more computers in the world than anybody else, uh, would this result in American culture overtaking European culture? And what effects would this have uh, for the Europeans? And yet in the Islamic world, uh, there is no concern for this whatsoever. Muslims are, are unaware of what are the effects of this. And that is why you find that in the Islamic world, uh, you find this what is known as, or what some writers have uh, called, 
uh, the hideous schizophrenia, where you find people who call themselves Muslims, but yet inwardly are westernized. And, you know, they, it's, it's, you look at the Islamic world, it's just, it's just a uh, panorama of contradictions. Uh, here is the mark, and next to it is Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, you know, Masjid al-Haram has in front of it, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, you go to the Prophet's Mosque, uh, in the um, uh, parking lot, uh, there is a sign for Chanel perfume. Uh, what type of signals are given to a society? Because the society